Finding Avogadro's Number Part 1, Method 1, Using Baby Powder. Did I mention baby powder? Well, really, we're going to be using stearic acid for this attempt. Stearic acid used in cosmetics. Stearic acid is this white granular substance. It can be dissolved in ethyl alcohol. We know its density. Its density is 0 0.847 grams per milliliter, a little bit less dense than water. That will come into play. We also know the chemical formula for stearic acid C18H36O2 and we know it's atomic mass. Now wait a minute, I thought you were finding Avogadro's number. We are. Well, well don't you need to know Avogadro's number in order to figure out that atomic mass? Well, no. No you don't. We know that carbon on average is about 12 times heavier than hydrogen. Oxygen about 16 times heavier than hydrogen. Add them all up and there's your atomic mass. We can just be careful about how we're putting together our stearic acid and we can also guess if we take out the models and we take out the clay and the toothpicks we can guess what its atomic structure might look like. And there it is. It's a long chain molecule. It's got that nice hydrocarbon chain. It's also got a carboxyl group at the end, but we're going to have these long chain molecules flip over and stand on their carboxyl group. And when we do, we'll say, we'll guesstimate that it's about 10 times taller than it is wide. So there are the dimensions of this box. And you're asking, how can you get all these stearic acid molecules to line up like that? Well, that's easy drop it into some water. If you drop stearic acid molecules into water, they will arrange themselves as shown here in a single layer. And that's what we'll do in this lab. We will drop, we will put a drop of stearic acid solution into some water and form a puddle. And that puddle will be visible. The diameter of that puddle will be visible because we'll have baby powder. I mentioned baby powder. We'll have baby powder sprinkled on top of the water. Want to see it? Here it is. Nice. So once again, what are we looking at? We're looking at a puddle formed by all these stearic acid molecules arranged like blocks. They are 10 times as tall. Each molecule is 10 times as tall as it is wide. It's got a nice square base there. Hey, you want to see it again? Great. And this is the lab. This is our way of finding Avogadro's number to review. Avogadro's number fits into this equation here. The number of molecules is equal to the mass of a sample in grams divided by its atomic mass. And again, we know the atomic mass of stearic acid, 284.5 grams per mole. Think about it. It works, even if you don't know Avogadro's number. But we want to find Avogadro's number. The number of moles is also equal to the number of atoms in a sample divided by Avogadro's number. Really not that complicated. Just think about donuts. If you have 36 donuts and there are 12 donuts in a dozen, you have three dozen donuts. We just needed that magic number, 12 donuts per dozen. Tell us now, please, Avogadro, your magic number, the number of molecules in a mole. So there's the equation that we'll be using at the end of this demonstration. But first, we're going to focus not on Avogadro's number, but on volume. That's right, volume, the volume of the stearic acid. We have three, count them, three equations for the volume of stearic acid. We can find this volume multiple ways, and we can find Avogadro's number, the first equation on the top there. The volume of stearic acid is equal to 10 s cubed times the number of molecules. Think about that block again. The volume of that block is equal to, yeah, 10 s cubed times the number of blocks, and that'll give you the total volume. Very good. Equation two. The volume of stearic acid is equal to 10 s times the area covered by the stearic acid. And there, think about that puddle. Think about that puddle. That puddle is a height of 10 s tall and it is the area covered by the stearic acid. So that's method number two. Method number three involves density, volume. Do a little math here. Volume is equal to mass divided by density, which is good because we know the density of stearic acid. I told you that before. And we were also careful to prepare a 0 0.050 molar solution of this stearic acid. And if you know a little bit of chemistry, you know that means that there are 0 0.050 moles of this molecule per Leader. Even if we don't know what a mole is, we can still use this equation here to find out that there are 0 0.01422 grams of stearic acid in every milliliter of the solution. And then we put one drop, one drop of the solution into that water with a baby powder on top of it, forming a puddle. So how big's a drop? Well, I took my pipette and I found that it took 34 drops to make a milliliter. 
That means each drop has a volume of 0 0.0294 milliliters, a little bit. And now we know the mass. Now we know the mass of stearic acid inside that drop, about 4.2 times 10 to the negative fourth grams. Good for us, but we wanted volume. Well, we, we want mass also, but there we can do it. We, now we know the mass and the density. We can find the volume of stearic acid. Now, it seems like we've been really smart here, and in a way we have, but really we've just been careful about what stearic acid is, how it was prepared in the laboratory, how we made our solution, and how we dropped it into our experiment. And we also, besides the volume, again, we know the mass. That'll come in later, so good for us. One method of finding volume done. We know the volume of stearic acid. And using that, we can go to another method. Now we can look at the volume of stearic acid as 10s times the area covered by that acid. So here's our experiment. We've got our baby powder ready to be dropped onto, and there it is. And our job is to find the area of this puddle. Well, we can use a meter stick to find the size of this table and make a grid and then isolate the puddle on this picture and put the puddle on the grid and then figure out how many squares are covered and what percentage of the squares. I think I was careful enough. The answer I got, I'm not super, if there's a problem with our answer, this is where it'll come from. The area I got, 0 0.077 meters squared. So not a huge area, but doesn't have to be a huge area. I now know the volume and the area, and I can solve for S. Good for us, we found S. Again, what is S? S is the dimension of the molecule. S answers the question, how big is an atom compared to a grain of sand? And if we consider that a grain of sand, about a millimeter in each direction, about a millimeter cubed, maybe we could say that if that is the case, then the grain of sand is seven orders of magnitude bigger than the atom. By the way, the Earth, fun fact, is about seven orders of magnitude bigger than you are. We can also now answer the question, how many of these little atoms are inside that grain of sand? Again, the volume of the grain of sand, it's about one millimeter on each dimension on each side. So that would be a volume of about 10 to the negative ninth. The volume of an individual atom, not a big fancy atom like stearic acid, but just a normal atom about S cubed. And there you have it, we would need... 10 to the 19th of these atoms to make this grain of sand. Now, 10 to the 19th, that's a pretty big number. 19, not too intimidating. 10 to the 19th really is. And if you don't believe me, consider this. How many grains of sand are there on all the beaches of the earth? Thanks to Google, I was told that there are about 400,000 kilometers of shoreline on the earth. When I first saw that, it seemed like a lot. The radius of the earth is only 6,000 kilometers, but I guess, you know, there's a lot of shoreline and it's not exactly straight, most of it. Anyway, we can convert that to meters. Let's say on average, the beach is 10 meters long. And if you don't like that number, you can use your own. And we'll say that the beach is about one meter. The sand on the beach is about one meter deep. If that doesn't seem like a big depth, please go dig a one meter deep hole. It's a pretty big hole. Anyway, here we now have length times width times height. So that would be the total volume of the beaches on the earth. And that has to equal the volume of an individual sand grain times the number of grains. Do a little math, divide it out, and you'll see that n is on the order of 10 to the 18th. So again, it sounds strange. You can't imagine it, but there are more atoms in a grain of sand than there are grains of sands on all the beaches of the earth. Fun fact, but not what we're looking for. Again, we're trying to find Avogadro's number and we are making progress. Progress with the volume of stearic acid. Progress on finding S, the dimension of one of the sides of the molecule here. Now we need to find the number of molecules, which we can do because again, we know volume and we know S and volume is equal to 10 S cubed times the number of molecules. So plug in our values and solve for the number of molecules. There are 1.87 times 10 to the 17th of those stearic acid molecules in that drop. Now we're ready to use that equation I told you about before. And we know, we know a lot of this stuff now. We know the mass in grams, check. We know the atomic mass, check. And we know the number of atoms in our sample. So let's plug them in. And a little bit of cross multiplication and division will give us our value for Avogadro's number, which is 
not exactly the same value that we were hoping it would be. And again, if there's a problem here, I'm going to blame the measuring the area, calculating the area of that puddle, but it's the right order of magnitude. So at least there's that. Maybe there's a better way though. That's part two.